this feeling that something was terribly wrong with the world that we live in, but you couldn't figure out just what it was. Then you've come to the right place. Secret societies, mystery religions, and the Illuminati have been controlling our reality since the beginning of time. But not anymore, because there is an awakening happening, and you are about to become a part of it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Royal Life Health Show. Last week, I uploaded a video with a fellow named High Priest Quatamani who has been eating a raw food diet for over 55 years. But it was an interview that I had done with him about 11 years ago, and I was trying to get in touch with him to get an update and see what's going on now and if he's still thriving. So I got to speak to him, and we did an amazing interview, and he is still thriving now, still rocking the raw food, living food diet. So here is the interview, and I'm going to put his link below if you want to contact him on social media, on his Facebook page, or go to his website and find out more about him. An amazing man, an amazing interview. Put your comments and questions below, and it's my excitement to bring to you uh, interviews with these long-term raw food, living food eaters. So here's the interview with High Priest Quatamani. Hello, everybody. I'm so excited. Uh, recently on my show, I... Uh, showed you an older video with an amazing person that I've met over the years who's been doing the raw food diet and the living food diet for a long time. And today we have him on the show, an update, because people want to know what was going on since that video was taken over 10 or 11 years ago. So everybody, today on the show, we have High Priest Quatamani. Hello. How are you doing, sir? Greetings, greetings, greetings to, to that sacred ancestral sun spirit. It's been a long time. I think it was back in 1998, uh, and you, I remember you walking in with one of our uh, other young brethren uh, into my, my brother's place, and you had such a sparkle in your eyes at that time, young and vibrant and ready to deal with life, and we begin a beautiful experience, and I'm glad to see that experience still going on this many years later. It's been about 20 some years now, isn't it? Absolutely, and as I told my viewers, I've learned so much from you and I continue to do so. I love uh, everything you're doing and we're gonna talk about that today because people want an update on you personally and also uh, all the great things you're doing to help other people out there. So uh, so before we get started, uh, people are, are curious to know the exact or, or at least range of years how many years have you been eating a living foods diet now? Well, I'm going to be very frank. To, to deal with the straightforward of living foods itself, it's been about 57 years. Uh, let me say, to talk about how long I've been eating within that pathway, it's, it's much longer because I started very young. I think in, in about, say, say, 65 years ago, I had gotten, uh, they were saying I, 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 to my parents that I had a short life expectancy and et cetera, and uh, they didn't have no solutions. And I have had a grandmother who's a, they call her a, a, a healer. And she, she had a different perspective on things. And she said that she had, had gotten a, a premonition as we would call it in our terms, a message. And that message was that uh, I needed to focus all my energy on the things that I love to eat. And I've always used to climb the trees to get crab apples and get any kinds of seeds and nuts. And they used to laugh at me because I would go in the garden and eat the, the, the vegetables and pull up the carrots and the, and the lettuce. And it really didn't matter. Whatever was growing, I'd grab a hunk of cabbage and just start eating it. And so they, the people around used to make fun of I and et cetera. And my grandmother said that, you need to consume the foods that, that uh, actually fit into your scenario because you are a different kind of being. At the time, I really didn't know what she was saying. However, as I began to consume those raw and living fruits, vegetables, seeds, and nuts, it put another kind of sparkle of life and I brought a greater sense of clarity. So I always give credence to that period of time. Right now I'm easing into the, the 80s uh, barrier, but, uh, I, you know, I give credence to her because uh, her and then uh, those grandparents of old who were actually from one of the islands, they brought forward something that I, is so precious to I right now because I have grandchildren and, and I think they 
time I have some great grandchildren and my children uh, and this family community, this, this Quatamani First Genesis tribe family community, which is a blessing to have the responsibility to look over to father and to make sure that we go on the right path. So to answer that question in a simple term, I'd say we can choose any one of them. We can settle at, at about 58, 59 year total raw living who's consciously aware. And uh, we can say about 65 uh, doing it, but just doing it because it came natural. That's amazing. So what about your, your health? I mean, have you run into any health challenges over the years doing this? Well, I tell you what, uh, I came from health challenges as they were saying. And uh, since that period of time, uh, it's hard for anybody to keep up with that because uh, the food make you so bright and light and you have to know how to combine them. That's the thing. Most people do not know how to combine them. You got to comprehend what they call your T cells or your defense mechanism. You have to comprehend those very elements that actually fuel your body system to protect it. And then once you do that, once you are able to consume the right fuel into the body, it does the rest of it. It has no problem fixing its own problem. What we tend to do is we go to people that treat it and don't fix it. And some of the treatments, you know, they have a lot of side effects, uh, adverse effects. We had, had an experience with someone who we hold so dear and the person, we had them in a recovery plan and they went in and they started giving them the side effects and adverse effects and et cetera. Then they say, well, the thing is you have to take this, but it has this, that it may affect your liver. It will do this and that. And we can't do that. The body can fix it simply by eating the raw and living fruits, vegetables, seeds, and nuts, and knowing how to combine them so that we get the wholesome nutrients necessary to fuel our life presence. Well, I live in a tropical environment, and I'm surrounded by a good amount of fruits right off the trees. And you talk about combining foods. What I've found is, and tell me if there's something to this or if it's just my own body, that uh -huh. uh, to separate the fats and the sugars you thrive, but when you have them together, it slows you down. Have you found that to be true or, or not for you? Well, you know, some people say uh, uh, coconuts has fatty ashes. And, you know, it's the determination of, of fatty is a matter of the linguistics because a coconut, it has, has a, a, it's, a, it's the whole food. It has electrolytes that we cannot even imagine at this particular point in time. And for us to think about, eating, drinking my coconut water and not eating my coconut meat is not even imaginable. So if someone say, yeah, but that has fat in it, it depends on what they're talking about. We get mixed up with, with animal fat and the other factors that, that interrelate with the cooking and disturbing the natural chemical balance of the food. And we tend to think that we're speaking the right language. The body has a different language. The body has the ability from our tongue both sides in the back and in the front it has to the ability to discern it can discern what's coming in what which kinds of of uh, liquids from the body will break it down and what will get the best nutrients out of it and we have to realize that we were created very intelligently we've gotten into a point where we think that we know more than the soulful essence of who we be and that's what causes the disturbance so the fatty acids, if you're talking about different kinds of fats, now, no, they won't go well. But if you're talking about living energy where the full combination works together, then you go, you, you're, you're not even going to have that problem. Yes. No, I was talking about, I understand coconut's one food in itself, just like a durian has sugar and fat, it's one food in itself, it's fine. Right. But when you add nuts and, and, and fruits together, which you would never find in nature growing together. When you add these together, it kind of slows you down. But when you eat these things separately, uh, you kind of thrive. Right? That's what I've found. Well, you're talking about one of my favorite subjects, combining. Uh, people oftentimes say uh, they, they want to eat watermelon and they're going to put it with banana. And then they want to eat with the watermelon. They want to eat some pecans or something like that. That's nonsense. You, you it don't the first you're absolutely correct they do not grow together they're not within the same family structure and therefore if you begin to mix it up you're mixing up your palate 
your taste buds, you're mix, mixing up the how the particular element is breaking down into your digestive system, the digestive enzymes, you're crisscrossing them, and yeah, it will slow you down. Uh, if you take the thing as it is, if watermelon has seeds in it, you can eat your watermelon and chew those seeds, but if you were to start bringing something else in, they do not combine with it. They don't have the same relationship with, with those particular seeds that are within that watermelon, which grow a watermelon. It's the same thing when you're mixing up the, the vegetables and putting this with that. You have to learn how to combine things well if you want to get the best out of your body's energy. So I fully agree with you on that. I just wanted to make sure you were talking about that instead of the other fatty things that people tend to talk about after they've cooked it and processed it and recessed it and, and et cetera. You see what I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. So when you say saying uh, watermelon's good to eat with the seeds because they grow together, but you wouldn't want to eat other seeds that aren't growing together with the watermelon. Is that what you were saying? Oh, absolutely not. They don't, they don't, they don't interrelate. They have no personal but relationship. But the watermelon seeds are fine to eat with the watermelon. Once you, once you eat them with the watermelon, it's a, it's a natural fact. Yeah. And it, it just it just goes together. And basically, that's what I've been doing. I, I heard that they grow watermelons without seeds. I try to stay away from them. Exactly. Complete. Exactly. So uh, after doing this this long, I have interviewed a lot of people eating a living food diet for a long time. And even myself working really hard living here in a tropical environment. I'm thriving on growing a good amount of my own food now, but not everyone has the opportunity to do that. So what's your opinion about store-bought fruits and vegetables that people aren't growing themselves? Is it, uh, is it okay to do the best they can, or is it just really they need to try to find a way to sprout foods or grow foods themselves? Well, now, Brother Paul, that, that is a, a, a serious issue. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate. First, it's very fortunate that uh, we have space that we can grow our foods and etc. And I'm I'm so pleased just to hear that you had a place where you were growing your food. That just that's so pleasing because that's the ultimate of what we should be doing. We should recognize the the sacred garden culture from which we come. However, those who are in those different mixed and mingled environments, they still need to eat properly, and they need to eat as close as proper as possible. So they don't have a lot of alternatives. You try to find a, a farmer's market, and you try to get those farmer's market uh, items that as organic as possible. Uh, you, I mean, you just get into a bind. I, I oftentimes, when I used to travel around, we go into places and they don't have this and that. I, I'm, I'm having a, a taste for curly kale and they don't have it uh, and, and et cetera. So because of the particular strict order of my own thinking, you know, I just abstain until I can find what it is. But I don't really suggest that a person abstain unless they have alternatives. My suggestion is that you eat as wholesome and healthy as you possibly can. Make sure that you're eating raw, living fruits, vegetables, seeds, and nuts. Don't take the excuse of saying that, well, I'm eating as wholesome as I can and start eating dead, devitalized, and depleted. Because raw, living fruits, vegetables, seeds, and nuts is how we should eat it. And we want to make sure in rhythm and rhyme that we comprehend that. So if you are seeking out and you only have the, a supermarket available, then that's what you got to try to do. Now we know it's, it's been tampered with in all of the different ways they try to preserve it and spray it and this and that because they don't want the bugs on it, which is a laugh. Uh, if the bugs don't want it, I don't want it. But the, the, the reality is uh, that's maybe what you have. Now you got to learn how to eat it and you need to get you some, some uh, raw organic uh, apple cider vinegar so you can see if you can get some of the things off since it's a natural cleanser. Apple, which is a natural cleanser within and of its own. And if you can get something like that and try to clean it, I would advise it. I would not advise that you go try to eat the stuff that's coming right out and you just start eating it because you're going to put all kinds of chemical spray toxins in your system and it's going to start to wear down your liver and other parts. This is why we have a lot of people who say that they, they were eating mostly raw. Now I noticed that mostly raw, but they have this, they liver problem. 
or they have uh, an in ingestion problem or, or, or any other kind of factor. And if they take a look at what the chemicals that they're putting in their body, you're short circuiting the body's ability to answer the call of consuming the fuel it needs to keep healed. Yes. Well, every environment, no matter where people are, if they're in an apartment in New York City or all the way in China, wherever somebody is, they can grow sprouts, living oh, sprouts, yes. living food. So what's your That's opinion right. about the sunflower sprouts and the pea sprouts? What's your opinion about these living foods? Oh, well, you know, that's just a basic part of our life. And it, whether we out here where we're growing, uh, we still take the, the seeds and, and sprout them. It, it's enjoyable. They're very tasty. And of course, you're getting it at a high impact level. You're getting it as it's coming out, I should say, at an infant stage. And it's at a stage where you're getting a tremendous amount of excess nutrients in it because it's being empowered as it grows. Everyone can go in their house and, and use window sills or any other thing, back porches, whatever they have, they can actually get some soil and grow some things. And you'll be amazed at how much you actually can produce, especially if you're dealing with the sprouts. You, yeah, you're talking about all of the different kinds, monk beans, lentil, yes, yes. and other, just a whole array of, of seeds, green peas even. You can actually take those and sprout them. You can lay them so that they, they split what they call them split peas then and the little sprout come out and, and, and of the center because it'll do it naturally. And, and that's all. All those things are wonderful for us to consume. You can do it anywhere. You can exactly. do it wherever you're at. And another thing is no matter where somebody's living, even when I lived in Brooklyn, I found a way to get my own food through learning about wild edible foods that are all around us. 90% of the weeds are edible. <laughs> People don't even know this. <laughs> That's right. Well, here's the real thing. Living in, in, in a jungle environment, we find so much medicine, and the medicine is food. We find so much medicine that is not unbelievable. A lot of the things that's being sold in the various uh, health food stores and et cetera, they're natural growing. And you know one of our favorite ones is that one that grow that little yellow flower on it. Uh, that green is so nutritional. What am I talking about? Dandelion. Dandelion, yes. I mean, it's so nutritional, power pack, and it, and they're delicious if you know how to prepare them. It's only you if you don't take time and realize that feed your body first, feed your temple. That's your holy place. Get it correct, and then the soul will be able to do well in a in a wholesome environment, so it can accelerate. And what's the majority of your diet? Are you eating mostly fruit in your environment? Are you eating a, just a, a balance of fruits and greens? What's, what do you majority eat? Now you're listening, right? Raw, living, fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts. Sometimes the fruits are growing. Uh, the, the vegetables, the, the green leafy ones, they're, they're all the time there, okay? The seeds, uh, once we get to the point where some of the things are, are, are ready to deliver some fresh seeds, we take them and we use them and then we let them get to the point where we can consume of them as sprouts or any other thing. We combine it according to how Mother Nature delivers it. If Mother Nature is not delivering it, then it's very difficult to even think of consuming it at that time. You need your seeds to regrow, but at a certain point in time, you have excess and you can eat them. And the same thing with your, your green leafy vegetables and your fruits. It's like I would my mangoes. People say, that's, isn't that too sweet? It has this and that. It's like a mango is a very healthy and healing. And the mango leaves are healthy and healing. This is why we usually tell people who have come to recognize that, that book we have, Cold Green. You need this. You need to have it available so you can see proper combinations of people who've been living this for a long time instead of those who are just talking like they're scientific experts and they do not know what they're talking about. They're unhealthy. They're coughing and sneezing all the time. These various pandemics are messing them up and they have no natural remedy for those things. So this is why we tend to recommend I guess why it's become so popular because we give them recipes and pictures. So if you don't know the vegetables, you don't know the herbs, you don't know the different things. So you can at least see them and know what they look like. And you may find them right around you. Are you, uh, so are the mango leaves edible? Oh, yes. I see this is, 
this is stuff I would tell you, go get the book, but you, you, you can get it right from my straight. The mango leaves has a, has a, a energy in it that will actually, you know, when you have headaches, it's, it has a tremendous amount of elements in it. If you have headaches and etc., you can grab you some mango leaves and, and take them and fix them up into your little tonic or guess what else? Avocado leaves. These wow. are, they are so mellow and the, the, the various elements within have, have been proven and they have it scientifically documented now. They're a little late, the letter late, the lever. And what they've done is find out the wow. So these things are actually, as it was said long ago in that first Genesis energy, that the fruits are there and they serve and the leaves are there and they have a whole different healing property and of course the roots and etc. But you gotta know what you're dealing with and you gotta have enough sense to deal with those things that the animals or that the ants and the, the other insects eat. And you have to make sure that you're eating for the proper reason, you see? So now when you talk about eating for the proper reason, and you said earlier that if you can't find ideal food, you will, you'll just abstain from food. Let's talk about fasting. Uh, how often, because I remember this clearly, you told me this years ago, but for the audience and where you're at now, I remember you saying some days you don't eat and you don't even realize you're not eating unless somebody tells you you haven't eaten. So how often do you actually fast do you do you plan fast or you just go by what's available how do, how do you do deal with fasting i tend to do it naturally if I, I guess over the years my body has built a certain kind of expression and oftentimes the the community there they say you know those family members they're there that you need to eat you need to eat and and we've had a lot of different things that has happened over these years with with individuals and sicknesses and et cetera. So people say, what kind of defense immune system do you have? Why is it that the things that have affected others are not affecting you? I say, I don't know. I guess it's not time for I to be affected that way. I have too much to do. And they say, but why is it that sometimes you don't eat anything? And the reality is that's just what the body calls for. It gets a chance to empty, but lately, I noticed that the whole eating process has slowed down with the eye. So whereas I probably could have eaten a lot more, uh, a quarter avocado at this point in time, do our well. Uh, I, you know, the, the coconut water, you know, I can, I just love it. As a matter of fact, you probably hear my sons in the back cutting some down. I want to give you one of these. They're so fresh and sparkling, uh, that tropical taste. But the certain things, if your body just simply tell you that, okay, I need time to clear this or that out. And at a certain period in life, I'm assuming that, okay, the body now has decided that you have emptied enough out and you can eat, but small proportions. And so that's what tends to happen now. In your life, have you experimented at all with a long-term fasting of 30 days or more with just water? Oh. Yes, my goodness. <laughs> I, I actually, I, you know, I did it for a very long time. People started getting afraid. I mean, I've done it long in this, but I, I had a period of time when I was in West Africa where I just had no desire to eat. And I, I went for six months and I just, all I had was small amounts of water. I became very thin and they got concerned, but I had a lot of energy. A lot of energy. As a matter of fact, I was playing basketball, still and keeping keeping with the running and etc. And they, you know, they were so afraid because we have values as to what the body should look like, and we're forgetting that the body can determine what it needs to feel at the time. And it was the best time in my life. Uh, I oftentimes think about it, but these children and grandchildren they won't tolerate it. They're saying, "No, oh, you need to eat something. You taught us to eat." So, you know, you need to eat something. So as I've said, now fast, yes, I, I, I tend to do it unannounced. Un, uh, uh, they just notice some period of time, no, I'm not eating, period. Then I'll take some coconut water. But sometimes I don't even have a desire uh, to, to include water, but it's very important for someone to put that water in their system. Uh, so I like to always advise the dry fast be careful unless you, your body is 
well detoxified. Um, oh. So as, as, go ahead, go ahead, Paul. No, no, keep going, sorry, go, keep going. Yeah, so as far as that is concerned, uh, I simply listen to the body, it speaks well, it speaks a language that I've learned to understand and appreciate. So was that six months on just water only? Yeah, six months on, on nothing but uh, coconut water and on occasion, uh, the water that I had put through my filtering system. Now, I know you're a very spiritual person, but when you did that, did you come out the other side of that a completely different person or were you just the same person when you began it? Oh my goodness. That's, that's, that was the transformation into the vibration of actually starting to be recognized and spoke of and addressed that high priest about the mind because the journey was so potent. I mean, you just see things different. You get a greater comprehension of those elements of life that are very significant. I see this bee is trying to taste me. <laughs> but but the, yes. the reality is it's very difficult for you to go whole and not touch into your soul. And that's the space that tie you into the spiritual essence of who you be. Yes. Now, this next uh, topic is something that I've gotten a mixed opinion about. I've interviewed many people that are beating a, a raw food diet long term and I get a different response I hear it's sleeping I hear some people say uh oh by the way uh, Dr. Fred Bishy always tells me about fasting when you can enjoy not eating as much as you enjoy eating you've reached a certain level and I never That's got right. him saying that <laughs> uh, but That's let's correct. Get to, yeah let's get to the level of sleeping so with sleep uh I've heard people say oh I only need two or three hours a night but for me I mean, I enjoy getting maybe seven, six, seven hours a night. So where are you at? Well, I have to be very straight. I, 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 it's been, it's been, it's been generations since I slept seven, eight hours. It, it's, it just don't happen. It just don't happen. What happens a few hours I'm sleeping and then uh, I don't know if something, something inside just wake I up. And now I'm into meditation on something or moving around. It, that, that's something you can actually uh, get your body tuned to the, to the point where you can get enough sleep in a short period of time. That's just a fact. Uh, it's a matter of how you sleep. You know, you got different levels of how you sleep. Some people go into those deep sleeps. And when you go into it, it isn't it like, it's like eating. Don't, you, you go deep so you get a lot quick. Uh, I don't condemn or have anything to say about someone getting lots of sleep because I have a few people in the community who love their sleep and they've never eaten anything but raw and living fruits, vegetables, seeds, and nuts since their birth. So uh, it's like some, like I actually, when I really think about it, that one son, he only can do it if he's been pushed hard and he'll do it like during the day. Uh, but then he, he as, as I'm thinking about it, as I'm looking at it, they don't tend to sleep that long. They sleep hard in short periods of time, what I would consider hard. But uh, as far as sleeping eight hours, you know, that to me is like, wow, I don't, I don't know if I could do that. I mean, I can try, but I don't know if I can. You see? Yes, yes. So... A lot of people out there today, when they're sleeping and just in the environment, you're in, you're in the jungle. You had to come out to do this interview to have a good signal. Now, mm -hmm. living with that signal all day long is bombarding the body and it can't be healthy for the body. So I think that has a big part of, of a lot to do because people look at being disconnected in a negative way, but it's uh, protecting yourself from all the environmental toxins that are out there, including the uh, toxic electricity and everything else. Now, yes, the noise. Body. Yes. Yes. Go ahead, Paul. That's you <laughs> on the subject. But I know you know this. I mean, you're the one that, you know, told us. And look, you're, you're the living example, living in the jungle. And this is one of the reasons why, is to be away from this electric toxicity. That's right. Run it, I mean, imagine you have all this, this electric poles running all over you. It creates noise. It creates sound. It actually, it creates environmental toxins. And you got that running all over you. How, do, how can you expect not to receive it? So we don't really want a good signal. 
<laughs> we don't really want it. Uh, we we get a signal to be able to call. I can sit if I need to to greet uh, Brother Paul. I can I can type it or I can actually call, phone call, but I don't want the phone too close to my ear. So we use this laptop and I don't want it too close, too long. Uh, I, I like the fresh, wholesome environment, the air. Mother Nature has a lot of powerful expressions, the oxygen and how it interrelates with those trees and how those trees talk. And we better get back to that very quickly, very quickly. If we do not, we're going to lose touch with our mother earth and uh, i think we all know that we have to become much more environmental conscious we have to be able to be green earth solar conscious beings if we do not we're rejecting the soul for essence of who we be and we're determining that we want to exist in oblivious nothingness and we can't do that yes all right so besides what we eat and how much we eat i have found a terrible a thing that people are doing, and it's when we eat. And I wrote a book called The Daylight Diet, talking about eating when it's light outside, which is what we would do in nature. If we didn't have mm -hmm. artificial electricity, we wouldn't be eating at nighttime. And digestion mm -hmm. isn't working well at nighttime. I've mm -hmm. learned some of this from you. I've learned a lot of this from you. Uh, tell everybody your experience. Do you ever eat at nighttime? And, and, and what's your experience with nighttime eating and digestion? Well, if you yeah. eat at night, you better know uh, you know, like seven o'clock, sometimes, you know, depending on how the earth has shifted, but time is time and night is night and day is day. Uh, we notice when there, there, there are those earth shifting changes. Uh, if you eat late because you've had to go somewhere, I, I, I have very difficulty with that. And that's one of the things that, you know, sometimes the, the family, you know, it's about 30 of us. I have a lot of children. And, uh, you know, when you when you're consuming, uh, they want you to make sure make sure you, you eat correct. They think I'm I'm, I'm getting to be an elder, <laughs> and so they think that we have to we have to look after you. You took care of us all these years, and what I like to tell them is I learned how to take care of I. I'm a little different. I just have no desire or no taste to eat. And if it get late, the only thing I may eat is a fruit. You know, I may eat. I, I mean. Uh, even the coconut, I'd rather eat it earlier because that, you know, the, the coconut meat is a very potent food that maybe some coconut water because that is eating uh, and, and then maybe some, a piece of fruit. But eating heavy at night, it's, it's actually, you're working against Mother Nature, you're working against your body and then you go and lay down. That's why people have these nightmares that they call dreams and stuff like that uh, because your body is complaining. They think that they're having a nightmare. They're really having the body complaining that, hey, you're, you're not treating me well. And then it comes out in all those different manifestations of, of what they call nightmares and jump up. Oh, I just heard. It's like, you, you, what did you eat last night? That's one of the first things I asked the person. What time did you eat? What did you eat? Oh, I ate about 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock when? In the early day? No, 8 p.m. But I had this dream. It said this, and it was somebody coming to chase me. It's like, uh, that's the ghosts and goblins and demons of the dead chasing your body, trying to take your soul away because you're overloading it. And the brain cannot get rest. The body cannot get rest that it needs to distribute that healing elements that your body needs to keep you moving in a divine order. Well, you do an amazing job teaching people through uh, your own life, but also uh, showing people how to make recipes and, and teaching people how to combine foods and to heal, basically. Healing is like one of the words that define you and everything you're about. It's mm -hmm. helping people heal and teaching them how to heal themselves. So what do you do? Let's say a person contacts you. They're, they, they've been diagnosed with stage four cancer. Their mind is so stuck into the world's ways. They don't know what to do. Where do you tell them to start? Yeah, you see, you were talking about many of the experiences that I know that you know that I've had to experience. And stage four is no joke. It is no joke. Everything has been toxic. And if the person sincere, if the person is sincere, the first thing that person must do, the first thing is start to get in fluids in their body, juices. That's the first thing that's necessary. The second thing, if they're sincere, if they completely devote their life, because they're going to have to realize that there's nothing that's going to heal 
that stage four cancer except Mother Earth, Mother Nature. There's nothing they're gonna do except treat it. And if you decide you wanna treat, then that's a decision that person should make. And, and everyone has to make their own decision. That's the choices we make. But there have been a few individuals who have decided that they wanted to recover. We had one, we had one in Atlanta and she, she got very serious. Her family wasn't that with her, but she got very serious. She was elder and she had stage four. And, and you know, I was very hesitant because you have to make sure that the individual is gonna go with it. Otherwise you just waste your energy. If they're gonna sneak, they're gonna go eat this and that, then they're gonna put their, their being back. They don't comprehend their, their defense mechanism. They, they don't comprehend the immune system. They don't comprehend how damaged it's become. So if you can get that comprehended in the person and they can write that decision to say, I, I, I'm going to go with it. Life, I'm going to go with it. Either it's this or burn everything out and go anyway. Uh, that happened with her. And she actually went three years longer than what they had said. And only thing why she didn't go any further than that is because her family convinced her, oh, you healed now. And so what you should do now, you can eat with everyone. And they had a, I think they called it a Thanksgiving, uh, some kind of celebration. And, and, and she started to eating it. And before January, uh, the, the toxins in her system had multiplied so rapidly that it took her out. And so it, it's a decision one has to make, but you must get the get it into your blood system, the food, the living energy as quickly as possible. And there's nothing not quicker than taking that whole food juice. So I would recommend that they don't get centrifugal, make sure they're getting uh, something that can extract the juice and then take it as quickly and as much and as often as they can to help the body to start to right that wrong. All right, well, what's your opinion? Uh, I know living foods is the ideal way to go. Wh how do you deal with people that want to consume death? They, they, they still want to hold on to the animal flesh. Uh, what's your feeling? If they're doing uh, mostly raw and, and holding on to that, are they doing better than the average person that just doesn't care? Or do they need to give it up 100%? Well, obviously, if it ain't live, give it up. If it ain't live, given up, dead, deprivalized, and depleted. Vegan, raw, and living fruits, vegetables, seeds, and nuts is how we should eat it. So the, the reality is when I encounter someone like that, I try to give them a bit of truth. A lot of time the person is, you know, they're, they're addicted. They're addicted to the salts. They're addicted to the sugars. And they, they don't really have any good advice. They're trying their best uh, to do something right but they can't break that addiction. Uh, I used to tell them, if you can, please don't quote I as saying, eat both because that's a deception. Go 100% all the way. But if you find it is difficult and you're doing stages, get as much raw and living fruits, vegetables, seeds, and nuts in your system as is possible. And I used to kind of get them there because then they'll say, that, okay, I'm eating, what's the thing they say, 80-20? Uh, we, we know a lot of the 80 20, 20s when they come around now, they, they kind of back up. Uh, it's like you saying that 80% is all that you can consume and 20% of dead devitalized. They say, yes. I say, so what's your, I'm eating 80-20. I say, subtract 20 from 80 and see what you get. And see if you subtract 20 from 80, just on a regular basis, what do you get? It's 60. I say, okay, now that was that period. Then you subtract 20 again. What do you get? And uh, it, it kind of makes the person give some thinking. We have to get people rethinking again. And consume something that depletes your body. And then the body go through the process of working to, to actually just balance that depletion to try to fuel it. And then you put more depletion in it. You're actually overworking the body and something is going to collapse something is not going to be able to do you actually punishing the body you're telling the body i really don't care about you all i care about is myself and what myself want to eat 
And it, it, whatever you want to do as a body, that's your business. I'm going to do this self to death do me part. And quickly and fast that happens. I've seen it happen so often. It's not even anything nice to talk about. But the reality is for those who can make another decision, it's a beautiful thing to talk about. And people don't understand that Genesis 129 was the diet our creator gave us. And when our creator allowed meat in our diet, it wasn't a, a reward for people. It was a curse for people. It was, a, it, was a, it was a response to a sin when everything else was depleted and they had no other choice to survive at that particular time. But it wasn't a reward. It was just something to get them get by until all the herbs came back and the fruits and vegetables came back. And uh, people, they don't want to let go of this. It's That's just, right. You said it very well, Paul. You said it very well. I thought, uh oh, we can really have a problem because you and I have never had a conflict. And you you said it very well and cleaned that up very nice. Because yes. some people say just that. They say, well, the, the the creator gave us the right to eat this. It's like, no, uh, you you ate something that was toxic and depleted because there wasn't anything else for you to eat. Uh, and you have an obligation, the brain power, to be able to go and find your natural food substance back again. And you have to work to rid your body of that sin. They don't want, they don't really want to do that because you know, all of a sudden you don't get addicted to something or you, you like it, but you don't even know why you like it. You don't even know why you master program to it. And so I really appreciate how you just said that. That's now, I don't why know. I have so much love for you. Now, I don't know how you feel about this next topic, but uh, but I feel strong about it. You know, there's medicinal herbs out there that we can use for medicine at certain times in our life. But when we use things for the wrong reasons, even the greatest medicine can become toxic. And That's I right. see uh, the, the hemp, the marijuana just being abused and used the wrong reasons. And it's just... It's just not bringing health to the body in any way. And uh, I don't know how you feel about that. But and, and then on top of that, people are, again, they're cooking it too as well. But it's just, uh, they're losing all the, any health properties from it. Uh, same thing with uh, coffee, the coffee bean and the caffeine and even the cacao and the theobromine and all these st stimulants to change and alter our mind mm -hmm. is the way people are using them. So... So basically, I'll come straight out and ask you uh, those three things. What's your opinion about marijuana, uh, 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 caf uh, coffee, and cacao? Well, I, I think you're asking that because you know if it ain't live, give it up. And there's no way that I'm going to take this body and stick something fired up in it. And most of the, my brethren, the Rastafarians and others, they said, we love your message, but why, what's wrong with, what's wrong with firing it up? I said, that's what's wrong, firing it up, killing all the nutrients in it. And what are you, what are you looking for? What's your problem that you have? Well, I noticed that when I fire it up, I get high. I said, well, I'm going to tell you the truth. When you fire it up, you get low. That's why you notice and you look, you'll see you start to become kind of at a certain period of time, kind of, uh, because the opioids in the brain, you, you've actually destabilized them. Uh, things that are actually good to neutralize our, our brain, we take in, and just like some of the things you were just speaking, coffee, I don't, uh, that, uh, unless you, unless you're going to sprout it, or unless you're going to take it and, and make something, you don't need it. There's too much caffeine for your body. It's not made for that. Uh, as far as cacao, cacao, if you know how to, to take it and you can't overdo it because you'll feel it, you'll start to feel it. And, and it, it, you don't need that. So as far as we're concerned, it's like you have to know how to consume it. What reason are you consuming this? What are you aiming at? If, if, if I'm trying to cleanse my blood, then I'm going to look for certain kinds of peppers, herb peppers. I'm going to look for those. Then I'm going to look for certain kinds of other elements in the green that's going to help that get into my blood system quickly so I can cleanse my blood. I, I know what I'm going for. I know why I'm eating it. And I know the reasoning. And so then I can do it with logical sense and intelligence. But if you're just doing it, then you don't really care about your body. And as I said, that's our sacred temple. It was a gift to us, us, the soul, for essence of who we be. We are much more than what we call our being human, being self. I, I have an issue with that. 
whole vibration of, of the deified self, the self-asserted individual. And we have to comprehend that we are collective mass of living matter, given a gift of life, a, a body for our souls to move in collectively and pass forward divine order. When they mess that up, conflict, confusion, and chaos. It's been spoken well in our ancient comedic texts, and it's been spoken well in those texts that came after that began to take that. It's just that people only took what they wanted. They didn't take the original part of Moses' text. They took whatever they wanted and justified what they were eating, and the harm and the hurt on the planet is showing rapidly, and we got to correct it. The consequences of uh, messing with the divine order is is sickness and disease, and that's the bottom line. And it's it's just it's just uh, continually, and it's uh, you want to call it the devil, the enemy, or whatever he wants. He wants us to get as far away from divine order as possible, and it happens on every level, from relationships to food. And this is why so many people are are, are sad and lost and sick. That's right. That's that is that. If we can, it's divine order or toxic reality. Supreme truth or self-deified fallacy. And if we get with self-deified fallacy, then we can justify not being in divine order. And that's that's a horror story that we all see. And right at this point in time, we have the gift. We are in life experience to bring forward what we can bring forward to help to bring divine clarity back to humanity because right now we need it. I had a friend who's been a raw foodist for a long time, and he tried to do an experiment where he was juicing cannabis, and he actually got high from juicing raw cannabis, and he wasn't looking to get high, he didn't want to get high, and he didn't like the way it felt. Uh, so the medicinal properties can be used in a positive way, but if you don't know what you're doing, you can get yourself in big trouble. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, so... Where, where are you at juicing? Do you, do you have a physical, I know you use the juice from all the fruits and vegetables and coconuts, but do you actually have a juicer in your kitchen where you might juice some celery and kale or do you just eat it whole as whole? Well, uh, yes, I, first we call it the prep area. And, and yes, I have uh, one, I'm sure that they kind of think are, it's popular, the angel juicer. You know, I have a Norwalk and these are cherishing elements. We, we take and we use them to keep our body wholesome and healthy because you extract it without heat and just extract the natural juice out of it to the, to the substance level so that you're getting all the vitamins and minerals and irons and et cetera necessary. Then when you know what's coming out of that, you can combine the other one with it to help to accelerate how that moves into your body. So yes, we, we use juicers uh, we use extractors. Uh, when I was in, in Africa, we had the marker and pestle. And, uh, you know, I used to really enjoy going out and getting a nice rhythm and beating my juice. But the family size has gotten to a point now where unless we had about 20 of those going at one time, uh, or, or, or somebody, 10 of them or five, very good, we wouldn't get the, the level of juice that we're getting. They say the angel is very slow. And I don't mean to give them any any promotion, but it's a very good product. And you know, if it's able to distract, extract the nutrients that I need out of that fruit or that vegetable, and it's basically for vegetables, then that's what we need. Uh, the wheat grass juicer uh, keep that around at all points in time because the various grasses we need to get them into our nutrient system so we can help the healing process. Wow. So you said you're approaching your 80s. And what is a man uh, with your experience and everything you're doing do for exercise on a regular daily basis? Walk, walk. You know that we have a, we have a, a you know, about 100 acres. I get on one side and, and me and somebody, we get to rolling. We walk. I think you realize that when I was, when I came back over uh, from, from West Africa, there were, they had some ugly war that was instigated by people trying to get diamonds and cash and et cetera to enrich their, their self. And all of them have fallen dead. So I don't, I see it didn't really do them any good. And they, they didn't really ex accelerate their, their soul or spirit consciousness. So they now exist in oblivious nothingness. But 
what happened is chemicals got in my eyes. So people say, well, how are you able to, to eat and move around? And you, you can't see, I listen to the sounds of things. I listened to, to all the elements and used all the senses. And then be smart. We are communal beings. I always want community around us. Always. That we are naturally and innately communal beings. And then the gift is this. The feminine by nature is communal. That's why she have offsprings. That's why they breed us as males. Uh, and, and of course, other females. They have the ability to function within a communal state. And I look at them and learn a lot from the mother spirit. And basically, if we can realize how important it is that divine union of one, masculine and feminine energy, the oneness of our creation, then we have the ability to move around in the environment. So what I'll do is call someone and then faster than I don't know what, everybody's always ready and we get to moving around, walk around, sing some songs and, and before you know it, we finished a couple of miles and you know, even realize it. Well, this is a great topic because, because uh, you know, this is something that I talk about, people don't want to hear about, but they need to. It's uh, <laughs> how much, I mean, I'm in full agreement with you about the divine order of uh, the feminine and the masculine, but how much do you think the feminist movement has, has completely disrupted that divine order and created so much chaos where you, you end up with the confusion we have today as people not just they don't even know if they're a male if they don't want to be a male if you're so confused because uh do you believe that the feminist movement was a, a catalyst in, in in this confusion well i'm going to tell you very bluntly I, I i do a lot of as you realize historical research and documentations and the oldest written text that we've known about the papyrus of Ana actually take time took time and described all of this it's unbelievable to see what's manifesting and what happens is that if once you get out of divine order anything can happen because outside of divine order is conflict confusion and chaos and once you sink into conflict, confusion, and chaos, you've lost touch with your soul. You've lost touch with that soul-to-soul -soul relationship necessary to forward divine order. And so this is what's happened. And then you have, we have to comprehend energy. We have not, as mortal beings, learned to comprehend energy. We get the energy of our creator mixed up. That some of us really actually think, and you can't convince them, that there's this big, huge, dude sitting up there and and that this big huge dude if it's i i'm not going to sit up there and i don't have feminine but sit there here's one and then they think that 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 big huge looking over all these people and then decide no -uh, you this that beg me and then the person who beg always begging for something they always asking please i need of this and i need of that they'll never go and give thanks for creation so that whole mesmerized of conflict, confusion, and chaos has messed up people's minds. So they feel like they can be, they can self deify They can actually make this individualistic decision to be who they want to be, how they want to be, in all defiance of nature and divine order. And it, that's insanity. But as the, as the ancient texts talk about it, that is an energy. There are two natures of energy, divine order, toxic reality, supreme truth, or self deified fallacy. And within that, there's divine order, or there's the toxic reality. And there is a, the most supreme essence of divine order. That's, that's the creator of this I and I. And then there is that other energy. And that other energy is about conflict, confusion, and chaos. It wants to steal your soul. It wants to use the energy of your soul to give it life, but it can't give it life. So it remains in oblivious nothingness and it continues to seek out souls to search out and use. And people actually volunteer and allow their souls to be used. We know, we know that that is out of order. We know that it's in toxic disorder. And we know that the feminist movement was orchestrated to breed what it has bred. And the thing is, the feminine is the most precious gift that can be given to man, he and she, because she birthed us. She will breathe what has been brought to, to her by he. So once he starts to talk in monotheistic and exclude her in her, her natural state, and she birthed us, 
you already got conflict, confusion, and chaos. And I'm sure a lot of our sisters who are tuned into you are going to say, where are they at? And this is serious. It's not no joke. What it happens is we have to recognize that we are a collective oneness of energy. And we have to recognize that we're two parts to one whole. And that divine union is the elements of man, he, and she biologically. Simple. I don't have to go any further. Let the person make their decision. So we've been given what's called the sacred art of the unk. It sometimes it's not really described, but I like to tell it like we have it in our ancient, most ancient time. That is divine consumption, fruit of the tree, holistically. Divine consumption, divine union, masculine and feminine energy, he and she, biologically. Forwarding the multiplication of divinity into every offspring and vibration of the generation next through divine socioeconomic family community order. And we're going to get to that. We're going to get to it. So long as there are souls like you continuing to push the agenda and looking and recognizing and giving credence to those who you know have pushed the agenda and not backed up, not faked out, then we're going to get to it. But it's going to be a process. But it is a process that's so beautiful for the sacred few of the few of the few. And I'm so glad that you in that crowd and that beautiful soul, that feminine essence that has tied you into a, a beautiful relationship that you started off talking about and those children, that's what's up. That's where it's at. The rest of it is just playing into oblivious nothingness, insanity, greed, lust, lies, illusion, confusion, death and deadly destruction. We don't need none of that. It's already enough of it. We need divine order. And the closer we get back to that order, the more we're gonna realize how much you want to call it power or energy or just the uh, uh, amazing things that we were designed to do as human beings that has been disrupted. And we look back at the in the, in the scriptures, we look right there with the one of the first acts of uh, breaking that divine order was with Adam and Eve right in the garden right there and the disobedience. I, and and right from there, the farther we get away from that, the, the order that we were designed, the Genesis 129 diet and everything at the beginning we were created to do. Uh, we see all throughout the scriptures, the farther we get away from that and the amazing things they did in the original covenant, the, the man's been weaker and weaker and weaker. And it's just because we got to get back. And then you have Yeshua who tried to bring us back. And then we got that power back to some degree. But then the feminist movement came. And now, we're like you said, confusion and chaos everywhere and destruction. That's right. That's right. That's right. That is beautiful. So, so the whole idea is it was said very clearly in those earlier scriptures, those earlier reading writings and etc. that the route that you're going is heading for apocalyptic Armageddon, doom and gloom. And, and what happened, instead of slowing down the brakes, people have accelerated the brake and they become weaker and weaker, more depleted, more devitalized. And as they become more and more of that, the closer Armageddon and doom and gloom has its route. And that opposition energy that some call any name you can think of. Uh, in, the, in the ancient text, they call it Set, which Sutik, which is Satan. Uh, any way it go, if it's whatever, Luciferian, if it's a Lucifer Jinn, if, it, if it's the devil, or any other names that anybody wants to call it, once you are standing in opposition to divine order, you are in alliance with toxic reality, regardless of how one calls it, how they declare it, whether they determine that this is their God of worship. Yes, those energies are a God of worship of those who worship it. But we have to get to the point of worshiping divine order and not do a lot of conversation through our actions. We have enough that we've been given. We should be given back to divine order. And we have the ability to do more than what we can imagine. I really appreciate you coming with that. We have the ability to do massive more than what we can imagine. And a few of us have to get to that and do what we can do while we're within this body of flesh as a sacred ancestral soul. Absolutely. Our spiritual health is just as important as our physical health. And I think the spiritual selfishness is keeping us from experience this divine order. You know, like right. it's, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. So uh, I'm so appreciative of your message here and to your message of community. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. I mean, this is what it's about. And uh, I just love a, a fellow you know i have i have a fruit farm here and i got i got you'll like this i got 70 different varieties of mangoes all these okay. new mangoes 
it's just amazing. And I'm learning how to graph trees and I see all this stuff. And there's a, another fellow here who does that also. And I love it. I said, what do you do with all the food that you have that you can't eat? He said, I give it away. That's so right. I give it somebody. It. I share it. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's great. Uh, yeah. I love it. So, uh, all right. So what about supplements? Do you, what, what's your opinion? Is sup, what's your opinion about supplements? Do you think they're ever okay? Do you think like, like what I love to do is I love to take, I have a moringa tree in front of my house. And mm -hmm. I tell people that moringa is amazing. So I, I make it into a powder. I dry it in dehydrator. I put it into a bottle. I have a powder. And not everyone that's can right. grow a moringa tree. I say, get some moringa powder. Technically, that's, right. that's a whole food in a supplement form. Uh, yeah. so, so, but what's your opinion about supplements? Well, here's the thing. What, what a, a lot of us have found over the years is there is a nature that opposes uh, our, our whole foods health and nutrition. Uh, there are some folks who politically decided that, no, we, they can't do that because we won't make the capital that we need if we take it and put it in, in, in bottles and cans and et cetera. And there are some who have gotten intelligent and say, okay, then let's call natural Moringa whole food. Let's call it a supplement. And if you label it as supplement, they say, oh, okay, that's okay because it's a supplement. But don't say natural healing herb or, or natural healing nutrients because Moringa has all of that in it. It not only the seed and the leaves and other elements of it. So the, the whole idea of producing it so that people have the, uh, the ability to get it, accessibility to it is a necessity. And if we want to call them supplements uh, in order to get them so that the person don't have trouble getting it, fine. That's the truth of the matter. They will okay supplements, but they will not okay if you if you give it a different terminology, and that's the reality of it. And I mean, I know some people are saying, "Shh, I priest, don't say anything." But I mean, with, this is for the sake of a few of us who who really sincere about that. And I'm so glad to hear you eating your moringa leaves and powdering them, and in your seeds when they develop, keep them. You know, make sure that you use your your sense and your wit because the seeds are very potent and make sure that with the leaves that you also distribute them properly and eat them with your with your other vegetables. Uh, they, they got a little strength to them, but they're actually delicious if you if you prepare them in a certain way. So Absolutely. those things are necessary. And that's, that, those are the things I'm happy to hear come from your mouth. Now, now the other things like supplements, you know, we see the 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 natural people say, oh, it's devitalized de 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 uh, vitamins and all this stuff we should stay away from. But, you know, like a pregnant woman who doesn't have access to all these amazing uh, fresh grown foods, there's some called prenatal vitamins. And there mm -hmm. are people that'll take a blood test and come up with a, a deficiency. And uh, I see value in some of these things that uh, are, are dead substances in bottles, but they're giving people vitamins that they either don't have the knowledge to get or the ability to get until they could figure it out. Uh, mm -hmm. So my stance had changed from when I used to say, well, it's not natural, leave it alone. Now I say, well, you know, natural's best, but for whatever reason, you're not getting that, you know, I don't want to keep a pregnant woman from getting the prenatals if, if she's not eating healthy. So what's yeah, no, your feedback on all this? Yeah, she, no, she will destroy her and, and she will uh, cause the baby to be uh, depleted. Uh, the thing is, Obviously, if she if she's pregnant, whoever that male is, uh, it must be accountable. I'm not talking about the other ugly circumstances of that opposition nature. Uh, so he must be accountable, and he must seek out the best possible food substance, if we call that a substance possible, uh, that that has the living element in it. Because if it do not have the living element in it, it's going to have side effects. So it needs the living elements in it. And we have enough of what they're calling supplements now. And they are supplements because you don't have the food, the tree. You don't have those things around. You don't have those things there with you and et cetera. And you can provide it. We have lots of people come out to our, our jungle or come to where my sons are at when they're out there. And they don't have certain things they, they can grow them but they don't have them and so they come and seek out those things from us and we do we turn them into powders uh we even different things like sugarcane they get sugarcane and it's not it's it's not really 
uh, extracted. So we have a, a huge sugar cane extractor. And if a pregnant woman, if she get it, it's amazing that sugar cane can do what other things cannot do for her to lift her energy up. When if you get it and it's not done right, then you can add too much sugar to her blood. So it's a lot of ways that we have to learn to comprehend the gift that has been given to us and how to use it properly. And I would definitely urge anyone out there, do not deprive you of natural uh, elements that we call supplement. Uh, don't do that. Try and get it in you. And you are going to take tests and it's, it's going to show this or that. And that means your overall nutrient factor is not balanced. But you're not going to get that done in a few seconds. So if you can get something in to help balance your, your vitamins A, B, or C, your niacin, your potassium, calcium, any then you must seek it out if you truly have a love for your temple. But at the same time, you have to seek out the best possible alternatives. Now, if they wanted your Moringa powder, I would, I would go for that. Some of the other things, they're gonna destroy their liver. And it's been shown already. What about B12 supplementation? Do you take that or recommend it to people? Uh, what, what this is an old subject matter. The old subject matter is that B12 comes from what? Bacteria. Mm -hmm. So what happens is we find out if the body, if you take all your food substances in their natural state and your body is doing excellent, then somebody done misread whatever they think, whatever it is. And we also have to comprehend this. We have to comprehend that when they were creating a whole new science of eating in order to create the, the, the medical field, what we call the pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical companies and et cetera. They came up with different things that they can say person is depleted of so they can sell what they need to sell. That's what they did. Uh, if you take and balance your food, if you balance your, your vegetables, all of the elements in nature have to be within those green leafy vegetables, have to be within those seeds. We cannot disregard that the foods uh, from the tree of life is our medicine, our food. We have to comprehend that the herbs and how they serve to, to aid the body's healing process. If we lose that comprehension, then we go for any okie doke that's been created. So uh, I'm sure that my body had, if it's 12 and 13 or B14 or 15, it's getting it. 22 is getting it because I'm gonna make sure that I eat the nutrients that the body is calling for in this factor or that factor. Now, if somebody is out of balance, they need a lot of help. And if they need that help, it's possible that whatever else they're saying that's in there, if it's, if it's a natural supplement, that it could possibly help them. Uh, but if you get to the idea of just going for any okie doke, you're gonna destroy your body temple. That's your, that's your sacred place of, of existence. Now, with the manipulation of the soil and, and, and some of the foods and the genetically modified foods, people need to be careful in their choices and sourcing out where they're getting what they're getting. Uh, mm -hmm. It's simple, as you say, the green leaves from the trees, but you've got to know what tree and what leaves you're eating and where they're coming that's, from. Because, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's today. why we... Yes, right. That's why we, we actually insist on, on people going veganic. You know, as, years ago, they say, you created a new word. I said, no, uh, it's vegan, organic, veganic. You know, try to use natural supplements, uh, if you want to call it that, natural ingredients in your soil, leaves that's broken down, other elements that's broken down, de decompose your, your, your various things. Throw them in a compost bin, start with the basic, start clean, and it'll get cleaner and cleaner. And uh, then put those things around. So, you know, in the jungle, it's about as natural as it can get because, you know, everything is growing, birds flying around. If the birds fly and they drop something around the tree, uh, hey, uh, I'm not going to go and try to move it or disturb it. And the fruits that's growing from it is excellent. But at the same time, I don't need to go bring some foreign items in that that tree has no relationship with over its thousands and thousands of years. And if we do that, then you're going to start to hurt not only that, that uh, tropical rainforest environment, you start to hurt your own being if you're consuming from the fruits of the tree of life. All right, so two questions here. So one, you all the children you have, 
if there was ever a situation where the baby was not able to get breast milk uh, in, in a situation, would you ever recommend animal milk or would you recommend just eating fruits and vegetable juices from nature or would you recommend a, a formula? Or what would you recommend in a situation like that? Well, we've seen a lot of those situations where people end up because they haven't balanced their body and because they're, they're, the person has gotten a mindset where they really don't want to feed that baby, et cetera, or they don't start off correct with the baby. And that ends up where the baby can be nutrient deficient. Uh, what, what we would do in that instance, you have seed milks that you can use. You don't need to go to no animal. That baby is not an animal. And then the various factors of the enzymes in that animal milk is not going to serve that baby. I don't care how much they promote the idea that, that, that the cow milk is what we should eat. It creates cows. And we know that the enzymes of a food creates a matter that relates to that food and it will create cow. It will create that mindset. That's why we have so many people who are kind of stuck and stagnant and stubborn and, and just not moving properly. If we can take seeds, sesame seeds, that makes a beautiful milk. And there are all kinds of other, of course, coconut milk is powerful. And it, it, the coconut milk looks so close to the, the human milk. Oftentimes when we're taking the baby and transitioning, you know, that ours is two years on the breast milk. And then when we start transitioning, what we tend to do is drink, uh, take the hard coconuts and juice them, and then do a little nice mixture with it combined. And the baby, it don't really, really know that there's that much difference sitting out in the sun, just for a short period of time, because you want all the active enzymes available and moving and in motion. And we take that and we give it to the baby and, they, hey, they don't really know the difference. The body appreciated. Uh, it's, in, it's transitioning from the breast milk of the mother to the other. That's what our experiences have been. As far as uh, going uh, with any of the other elements, uh, we, we just don't do it. Uh, I know that a lot of people have gotten in trouble. They tell a lot of deceptions and say they're doing this and that. We had a few cases when I was over in the States and uh, we, we were asked to try to help people in legal matters and et cetera. And you, know, you, you just can't trust where the person is going. And the only thing I can suggest is what we've done with our children. And they, are, they say, wow, they're so big and healthy. They are living foodists. You know, all of my sons play basketball, all of them from the oldest to the young, all of the younger ones play basketball. Uh, we were the, the national, uh, division championship in the country champion just just completed and all the these youth now are come, actually bombarding us with how come they're so fast why they run so fast why they're so accurate with shooting their their shot they have one of my sons they said what you going to do if the nba started looking at him he's so young and he's so gifted and mine is this try to find out why and how that person have lived so that you can see how you can accelerate your mental, physical, and spiritual health and well-being. They say they're such gentlemen. They're so orderly. They're respectful when they talk to people. You putting all those things together, look at those basketball players. They tattooed from head to toe. They're actually saying they sold their soul to the devil for a few dollars more. They're actually doing all kinds of toxic things. They work to hurt each other and etc. You know something is wrong. So we have to breed a new consciousness in every facet that we can, every level that we can. So mine, simple, if we can be an example, that's what we're here for. We play uh, basketball, soccer, or any other thing as an example, but we also play it to win. And we're not gonna try to win at the expense of hurting someone else. So that's our reality. Nice, nice. So you talk a lot about uh, coconut water. And the average, I asked the Reese, does he even drink regular water? And he said, no, he just drinks coconut water. That's all for many, many years. Mm -hmm. The average person doesn't have the access to the coconuts. That's right. And, and that stuff in the store is not coconut water. I don't oh, know what people tell me. That's not coconut water. So <laughs> when it comes to water, uh, the average person living in the city or living even in the country here that doesn't have their own well or spring, what kind of water do you recommend them drink? Uh, well, well, a spring, but if they don't have it, uh, I would suggest they find 
ways and means to get to someone that do have it. Obviously, distilling, if you if you have a proper kind of distiller, will deliver you some pretty decent water. Uh, there are a few that's that's pretty good. They don't go above certain heat temperatures and et cetera. And at the same time, they produce a nice, clean water. Uh, we have to use the best of what's available. We use rainwater. We have this big, huge, mastocity drum. And when it, it rains, it pours in the jungle, in the rainforest. And so we let that fill up. And then we just drink from that. And that, ah, oh, that's so delicious. Some people say, yeah, but if in, in, in if you take rainwater in the city, you're getting all that toxins. I said, possibly, I don't know, because I'm not going to be in the city. I'm going to drink my water in the jungle so that and fix the area so the rain just falls straight down in it. And uh, when I taste it, the body says, ah. Uh, and of course, How do you filter that water? Well, actually, I kind of, I'm really heavy on coconut water. I'm talking about for those who are, and like sure. well, even a person. How would a person filter the water if they're collecting it? How would they do what? Filter it? Filter it because it's sitting yeah, in this big thing filter. for how long? Charcoal, charcoal filtering system. Yeah, you use a use your natural charcoal filtering system. You just stop buying all those fancy cars and funny shoes and stuff like that and get some things that's going to help your body. You get your natural filter system. And when you put some rainwater through it, it runs through it so fast, you don't even know that it's filtering. It's like when you take well water, for example, and you run it through a natural filtering system, you find so much excess that the body don't need. When you take and, and you use creek water and you pour, you know, we have uh, all of that uh, available to us here. But we, the creek we have, I wouldn't, I wouldn't find a piece of land if I don't have a creek on it. That's all it is to it. But what happens is we find out that others don't feel the same way. So they throw anything in it. They don't care. And so what we do is filter every, every ounce of water that we are gonna put into this temple. This is sacred. This is the best that the soul have. This is our church and everything. We worship through our actions, not through saying, oh, please give me. Mm -mm. No, come on, stop being a beggar. Let's give back and let's do it by taking very good care of our temple. That's a gift to the soulful essence of who we be. Well, you got so much great information to share. I'm going to put your website uh, below. Uh, you have several websites, but I'm going to your main website here below the video. But tell everybody what you actually do and how you help people or uh, you, you, I know you have a lot of videos on the internet. Just type uh, your name, his name on the internet and you'll see it come out. Everything's spelled correctly and all the links are below. But tell everybody what you're doing now, uh, what, what, what you're getting done down there. Well, actually, uh, we, we spend a lot of our time trying to, I, I'm, you, I don't even want to use the word trying because we've had success. Uh, given as much energy you know, we, we, we first, you know that we're the Quattamani Holistic Institute of Brain, Body, and Spiritual Research and Development. And that's a 501c3. And uh, there are a few vegans who, who tend to contribute to it because they know that we're going to keep teaching whether we do it or not. But we have that and then we have uh, a, a, a place down here. And what we try and do, what we work to do, what we focus on is giving individuals an alternative on how they're living, how they're eating, how they're interrelating with each other. Uh, we, we, I think we have maybe 12, 14 books over the years, uh, and uh, we, they're, they're kind of deep, as some people say. Uh, the, the last few, uh, they say, that, wow, that's a beautiful one. I think one of them uh, is called the Sacred Ancestral Temple of, we say, of Christ, K-R-I-S-T, and uh, in that it has some some things that a lot of the youth down here find really amazing it talks about the living uh experience of the one who they call christ yes robin bendura they, they they realize that okay wait you're saying that he ate this way and he and we have that that whole transcribed inside of the text which really tends to blow people's mind we love to see people's mind get blown into a higher level of consciousness and so what we tend to do is promote the idea of getting to a, a higher level of consciousness as much as possible. Why? All of my children are going to need to mate. 
All of the females are going to need to mate. All the males are going to need to mate. And we have a principle. Our principle is obstinance until you are mated. And so we, we don't have time to run around experimenting. We, we are totally opposed to that whole lifestyle of, of running around and testing it out and this and that. Ours is to get these you a different approach. And we're finding that there are quite a few that we didn't even know existed coming out of the woodwork saying, wow, that is so beautiful. You know, I've lived this way. I didn't know what the reason was. And, and I find I just don't want to do these things. I don't want to be a, in that environment that have us doing all of these uh, things against our body and picking up sickness and diseases and, and STDs and stuff like that. So we work with trying to give them a different alternative, eat a certain nature of foods, and it will actually balance those particular things in your body that, that creates that toxic adrenaline, that rush. And that rush is unhealthy and unhealthy. So this is what we spend a lot of the time doing. And of course, we also spend a lot of time with those activities because these, these generations that are coming behind me are getting older and older. And uh, they, they are about the possibility that they got to take, uh, you know, the baton and it's got to pass on to that next generation. And we already have that next generation and they, we have to prepare them. And we have to give those youth who are looking at this as an example and seeing, wow, there's actually a divine example. There's actually an example of people living this way. That's very important. So that's the major part of what we do. Just be a divine example. Walk the pathway. Don't talk it. Don't do a whole lot of telling people and then you contradicting and conflicting in every way and your offsprings are even worse. We have to be able to have accountability and credibility about being responsible. Wonderful. That's beautiful. And I, it's, it's great. I, I know your community. I just love everything about what you're doing there. And uh, I look forward to getting down there one day. If, if, if that happens, we'll see. But uh, it's great to connect with you and, uh, and everything. And everybody, contact the link below the video. That's the website to see everything they're up to. They're also on social media. And it's just a wonderful community. And uh, I just pray everyone uh, seeks to get back to divine order and learn about what that actually means because that's what it really comes down to. That's, that's, that's the key to success. So what we call success or being uh, able to be consistent at eating healthy and treating our bodies healthy. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us and taking the time. And it just looks so beautiful out there behind you. And uh, it's yeah, so nice. These youth for hustling coconuts for I because yeah. I have, have my coconut every day, sometimes at least twice a day. Uh, most times. If I, <laughs> so we have to have lots of coconut trees and we have them scattered around in different places so that we can get coconut tree, coconuts whenever we want. And as far as a visit, there are a few people that I, I leave an uh, open invitation and you know you're one of the few. Thank so, you, you Thank know, you. You, you just take that just like that. Uh, you've shown over years, it's been over 20 years. And for I to sit and hear you, whatever the, the, the challenges have been, that you have actually settled into a, 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 that, that order of divine living. <sighs> that, that every second that was taken, sharing information with you through the years is worth every second of it. And that's a gift back to I. Thank you very much, Madasi, and our own speaking. Hallelujah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, everybody. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. Put your comments and questions below and uh, we'll, we'll get to them. And uh, everybody have a blessed day and a great real life. All right, everybody. There it was. I'm uh, just loving this uh, interview and everything we discussed in it. And there's so much more to discuss. So hopefully we'll have them on the show again. But you want examples of people that have been thriving and doing this for a long time. There goes your example. He's amazing. And the whole community and tribe where he's down there with is, uh, they're all thriving because they're all eating the living foods. And, and not just that, their principles of life, the community, the simplicity, the love, and not the getting, but the giving. Everything uh, that produces good health is what they're into. So uh, I hope you like that interview as much as I liked doing it.
And uh, if you have more comments, questions, or anyone you'd like to see me interview, put them below the video, uh, their names. Until everybody, have a great day. Remember to like and subscribe if you like this video and keep growing. Nature's wealth, good for your health. This is the Raw Life Health Show. Raw Life, brighten up your life.